Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Another reptile visio video and something slightly different. Might look like a snake, but it's actually a lizard. I'm absolutely boiling. I've just been doing my deep clean in the reptile room. I, I sort of have a rolling deep clean of every three or four days. It's not weekly, that's that's not good enough. And I also spot clean and change water if they poo in it, but it's a, a three to four days rolling cycle. Ruddy flies. Absolutely boiling, because obviously a reptile room, it heats up, it's tropical. I'm gonna show you these unusual animals. To me, they've always been called European glass lizards or European legless lizards. Um, the local name and the name that seems to be most widely used on on social media and youtube and so on is the shelto pusic a more local name like ruddy fly interesting lizards um we have the slow worm here in the uk a small legless lizard these are like a giant version um what they are is incredibly intelligent really fun to have around very very interesting but let me show you them before i waffle anymore hold on so let me tell you the story of these animals. There's five in here, they're all adults of varying sizes. Unfortunately, Celtopusics are almost not bred anywhere in the world in captivity. It has been done in Australia, strange enough, in a zoo, and one or two other people, I believe. <laughs> it seems the key is to get these animals properly hibernated, properly bromated, down to five degrees Celsius, really properly cold. That seems to be the trigger. Where they live, these are probably Uzbekistan animals. I've been told by the colour, they say they range widely across Europe. You're looking at freezing, freezing temperatures during the winter. I can't, I can't throw them here, I want to love my money. They're just hanging on to my fingers, get in there. <laughs> freezing in the winter quick get get it quick get it and really hot summers so the story of these particular animals is they were handed in with the several others to a reptile rescue as really sickly ill imports the guy this is the story i was told the guy was fine he walked in with a bag and said oh, can i leave these with you the bag was opened and they were deemed that we think the guy had deemed them unfit to actually sell on they were in such a state they were covered in sores and wounds you can still see some of the sort of the scarring on this animal the reptile the reptile rescue dewormed them they told me treated them for parasites rehydrated them and got them feeding and i took five of them on the project is outdoor enclosure hibernate cold in the winter and see if we can breed them here in the UK. Because to have them pulled from the wild, and you know, like any wild take, if it's not done correctly, it's usually detrimental to the actual individual animal. So they came here last summer. They were in this setup, 6B2, UV light. They don't need it any more than a slow one does, but I'm sure it's beneficial to them. And there's a lot of hooing and howling over UV lighting. And it'd be interesting to find out for sure some real proof on this stuff. Um, it's nearly all hearsay and yeah, sort of proof in inverted commas. But it's a lizard. They can be kept long term without UV, without any seeming ill effects. But it's also a lizard that will be exposed to a lot of ultraviolet in the summer months where it lives. So UV lighting for these guys, incandescent heat lamp on a thermostat. Strange it's at the wrong end, but a slightly damp hide box. And dry substrate everywhere else. But this is, was a holding facility more than anything else last year. They came in still quite thin and they were heavily fattened up by me. And then last winter they had a long hibernation, certainly down to 5C. And the view was to wake them up this year and place these animals in an outdoor enclosure with a partially glazed corner so they can benefit from extra heat if need be. It's now middle of May and I'm still behind on these enclosures and it is literally a lack of funds to build them at this present time. So when they came from hibernation, these guys here this year went into a 4B2B2 enclosure in the hope that I'd soon 
have things set up. I haven't, and what I noticed was it was a 4x2x2. It was also at waist height. This enclosure's on the ground, and I started getting some nose rub with the individuals rubbing on the front glass. You might be able to see it on one or two of them. So we've swapped things around, and I've gone back in this 6 by 2 by 2 It has got a wider lip here. The other one was glazed right lower down, so I think this could be helping. And we've got no more rubbing on the glass. We don't want to, you know, we've got to stop stuff before it happens. You can see them here eating Mario worms. I'll overlay a clip of them eating other stuff. They eat anything meaty. They love locusts and crickets and they chase them like a lizard. I know you won't believe it because it looks like a snake. They chase things around like a lizard without legs. They do not slither slowly like our slow worms from our much cooler UK climate. These are a hot, active animal. We've got a heat spot here, way into the mid 30s Celsius, and then over here, down to around 20, 22 under there. So a good range, a good range of temperature for them. And you can see where they all are hanging out right now, right in the full heat. Beautiful animals, called glass lizards, because if they get attacked by a predator or really badly treated, look at this one. Just like many lizards, they'll shed part or some of their tail, and it's meant to sort of really shatter off in pieces, giving it a glass-like effect. They are obscenely inquisitive and intelligent, or they seem intelligent. Let's have a look. Oh, he's on the run. He's thinking about it. Or she. <laughs> They always want to come out and explore as soon as doors open. You can see on this one, this is partly shed skin here, because obviously it's not a snake, so it just come off in pieces particularly. And partly previous damage. And look at this individual here. This one has actually lost quite a bit of its tail at some point. Very strange to hold. It's nothing like holding a snake. This animal is very, very rigid and they'll barrel roll like an alligator in your hands. They can be very feisty with each other at feeding time when they're kept communally, that is for sure. And they can thrash and lunge and spin when they're in your hands if they're a bit nervous. None of these individuals have ever tried to bite me, although they're more than capable. And I'm sure there's people that have been bitten by these. If you watch YouTubers herping in the wild, catching these animals, they're also pretty placid, although they will musk. They grow big. You can sort of see, this is the biggest one. He's having a snooze, so. I'll wake him up, bless him. Oh, bless him, it's like my old dog. It's like, what the hell's going on? Wakey, wakey. They're certainly, I think, gonna be a great owl. If you've got a greenhouse in the UK, great animal to have although they're going to eat a lot of small lizards and things for sure they're ravenous and they do as i've said they do chase things around like a lizard you can see it's got an ear hole it, you saw it blinked and to give you some idea of this animal hold on guys sorry young man his body his body whoa, his body ends here hang on body ends here Cloacas around there, huge tail, and of course we know the snake is all body with a relatively short tail. So to the uninitiated, we've got an animal that looks a little bit like a snake, but he's actually very much like what it is, which is a lizard without legs. Hello. You can see a little bit of nose rub on there. Little beauty. Very, very nice animals. So European legless lizard, highly recommended. And the only reason I don't recommend you get one is because like these, they're pretty much all wild taken. And that is a shame. Let's work with these. The people that have got them, I think need to be really working with these. Getting them into good condition. And getting them breeding. 
the perfect setup would definitely be a greenhouse setup, especially this hibernation in the winter to make sure they do get down to a temperature. You can see how inquisitive they are. Nothing like watching a giant slow one or even a blue tongue skink the way it goes along. Obviously no traction here on a smooth floor. Hello. Hello. Push himself along like an inchworm. Let's get him back in there. In the wild, they eat a lot of invertebrates. They leave bird's eggs on the ground. They absolutely go mad for snails. I don't feed these snails particularly because although I can harvest lots of wild snails, snails are an intermediate host for an awful lot of parasites. I tell you what they do, like any insects you want to throw in. Hard boiled eggs they absolutely love. Hard boiled an egg, chop it up with the shells on, shell and all, they feast on those and that's a good source of calcium. Not much different, I'm sure, to a snail shell. So just remember, really good hot spot in certainly mid to mid to high 30s Celsius. But make sure they can escape it. Really are really are a wonderful pet lizard <laughs> a wonderful pet lizard there he goes barrel rolling and very much think of a think of a long big skink that's lost all of its legs not so much a snake they're just nothing like a snake apart from the first oh look there's a snake other than that everything about them handling them in many ways working with them, intelligent factor. The way they feed, think of them as a lizard. So there they are. Strange looking beasties, still quite cool. I'm gonna warm up even more now and get active and feed. I don't know, maybe three weeks of warming up and feeding well. They've all been shedding their skins. And they're all a little bit peckish again now because they're ravenous feeders. And they're all out in the evening again, looking for some food. Like a lot of reptile pets, don't get them unless you really, really want one. Simply because this thing's going to live 50 years or so, much like our UK slow worms. That's an awful long time to commit yourself to something. And like most animals, they like to be kept well, kept in an environment they know, and not be passed around endlessly. 
foraging around in there. Something else to give you some idea of their kind of feeding behavior. These guys rapidly, happily, and quickly will grab a mouse off a forceps, a frozen thawed mouse, and swallow that down as well. Doesn't want to be any thicker than its head, slightly smaller really, but yeah, small mice, quite happy on the menu. Bits of Dale cockerel, quite happy on the menu. I'll also feed them a high quality cat food. I'm talking the dry pellet type cat food and occasional dog food pellets. Sometimes they eat it with relish, sometimes they seem to have no interest whatsoever. Um, maybe more so when I got them and they were really hungry and less so now that they get a well-fed, varied diet. So just to give you that heads up, that they kind of seem to eat anything. If you put a bit of a mixture in there with a little bit of fruit or something, they'll probably eat that. Um, I'm sure in the wild, they're quite omnivorous at certain times of the year, but these ones here, very much, very much the carnivore. Never seen them fight or bite each other. Apart from, if they are hungry, you, as you see or have seen in the footage, they will literally, like something off of um, Jurassic Park, sort of give each other a snap and a push and a bite to sort of say, get out, I'm the dominant one and I'm getting the food. Uh, even to the point of one will bite one and another will bite it back. They, they, you know, almost like get off. Really annoyed about that nose rub on that guy there. Uh, and how different, again, like I say, whether it's because they're lower down, I think probably because they've got a higher frontage, but no more nose rubbing since we moved them. It's just, they're not colorful, but they're so interesting. I really could watch these guys all day and they can be so quick that you can see wild caught animal. It's not, it's not freaked out by humans, despite the awful treatment humans have given these particular ones. Get in there, here he goes, doing a little twist. <laughs> Look at this. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. I will make another one once they're outside, but in captivity, 4B2B2, absolute minimum, absolute minimum for an individual. I'd go bigger, I'd go bigger. 6B2B2 isn't a particularly large space, especially for a wild caught animal that spent a lot of its time hunting its way through sort of open grassland and semi scrubland near Lake Covenant. <laughs>